Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a production tip and trick tutorial video on ADSR. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly come up with cool ideas for drum fills, fills that you can use in turnarounds and your drops to transition from section to section in your songs, etc. Now, if you're a really good finger drummer or you're an actual drummer, this may seem like a little bit of a weird kind of production hack, but for people who don't drum or maybe they struggle with drum fills because they can be a little bit of a pain in the ass to make this will be a cool tip and trick so if you guys don't know what a drum fill is it is the space in between a new section or your turnaround where you hit like different elements the most of the drum kit the most classic example of this would be like a tom fill like a dooga dooga doom and then back to the to the groove right well in edm most of our productions are using sample based drums and it's kind of hard to trigger those so a lot of guys who create EDM, they do what I've done here, right? Or even hip hop and pop, you drag and drop samples and kind of create your groove. So I've done that with these uh, elements right here. There's kicks and snares and hi-hats. Okay, so with the kick and the snare, I just dragged, dropped right into Logic. Now with the hi-hats, I actually had opened up Machine and I played these. Um, I, I think it's easier to play hi-hats. I think you get a better result. It's having that realism of velocity and the velocity sensitivity. Well, speaking of velocity sensitivity, that's a huge part of drum fills. If you just have a bunch of hits, random hits on a drum fill that's all the exact same velocity, it's just going to be a really, really shitty noise, and it's not going to be a drum fill. So what I'm going to show you how to do is pretty cool, and you can do this in any DAW, but let's listen to it real quick. So let's listen to this drum groove, and pay attention to this green section over at the end. Right? It was a drum fill into the turnaround coming back to maybe the next four bars or maybe going into a different part of the song or whatever it may be. Now, the way I did that, I uh, played it using this tip and trick I'm going to show you. And you can see here that the waveforms, if we zoom in, there's clearly different velocities going. So here's what I did. And you can do this in any DAW. Shout out to my, to my friend. His name's Ben. He actually does this in Ableton. He gave me this idea. All you need is an arpeggiator, anything that you can use as a MIDI controlled effect. So uh, I have an instance of machine pulled up right here, and I'm using a kit from my Future Bass drum pack, and it is just nothing but percussive hits, okay? So I love those sounds. Right, it's just a bunch of different percussive sounds. And the reason I'm using this is because what you do is you load up any sampler that you want to use. You can use the EXS24 battery for contact. If you're using Ableton, you can just use a drum rack. You can use anything in FL Studio. It doesn't matter. You're going to load that up into a onto a, a track that's basically a software instrument or can handle incoming MIDI. And then what you're going to do is load up an arpeggiator. Now, in Logic, that arpeggiator is up here on any software instrument. It's above the actual software instrument. So you can see where it says Machine 2 here. Then it says ARP. So inside the ARP, you just tweak and mess around with the settings and mess around with the rate. So what I do, what I like to do, is I like to just draw in a chunk of MIDI here. And then I just add in some notes. So let's play this. This is the MIDI coming from the arpeggiator. And you can see that it's a few different notes playing at the same time. And then some notes coming in later in the progression. Right now, what I've done is I've set this specific instance. If I go to options, I have it on random. So having there are two things you want to be aware of if you're going to do this tip and trick is you want some random hits. You don't want it to be too robotic and too, I guess, formulaic sounding. And you also want some random velocities, right? So I set the random up to 50%. So not every velocity is the same. Then what I do is I just take this and I just bounce it to audio. So we just bounce that one to audio right there. And what I'll do is I'll just go back in, maybe change some samples, maybe change, maybe go into the MIDI and take, move it down, right? And then I'll bounce that same uh, same uh, pattern. I have these two different audio regions I just bounced from the arpeggiated drums. And then I'll just kind of listen. And I'll start to just chop some stuff. Now, the reason why, I, I don't think, it's very rare, I think, to get just a really good usable drum fill from this, but it's a great starting point to give you an idea so maybe you're not falling back to using the same old samples for your fills. Like, maybe you rely too heavily on snares or toms, right? So here we have some weird instruments going on. All right, so I like those first two hits, so maybe we'll take that out. We'll allow this one to come through. So then we have... 
right? And let's try layering that with the old one that I had before we did this. All right, that's kind of cool. Um, let's listen to this one real quick. Okay, and I don't really like too much of that one, to be honest with you, so just delete it. Now let's listen to this, though, with the new one that we just made. Now, like I mentioned before, I think this is a great way just to get an idea flowing to come up with a fill element. And it might take a couple passes, a couple bounced versions of the MIDI, but you might get some cool, interesting ideas going. Now, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.